Hey there, my name's Gary Sims and this is Gary Explains. Now recently I was given an old laptop, in fact from one from 2012, that uh, a relative of the family no longer needed. Now it's got a dual core Celeron in it, it had uh, just four gigabytes of RAM, it had an actual mechanical hard drive and when this thing started up it took a long time before it would kind of become used. In fact, over five minutes after the desktop appeared, the hard disk was just, you know, thrashing and it was it was unusable basically. In fact, the person who was using it used to say they'd have to go and turn it on and it warm up a bit, leave it for five, 10 minutes before they'd even try to use it. I thought to myself, well, I reckon I know a way in which I can revive this laptop, bring this old laptop from 2012 back to life again. It's got a good screen, 5.6 inches. It's got a good enough battery. It holds it for around 45 minutes, so it's useful. So I thought to myself, let me try and see if I can bring this back to life, rejuvenate it. And so if you, that's what I want to do in this video, explain to you the steps I took to rejuvenate this PC. So if you want to find out more, please let me explain. Okay, this is the uh, PC here. It's a 5.6 inch screen on it. Packard Bell 2012, as I said, actual hard drive, uh, just a dual core Celeron and Windows 7. So what did I do? Well, there are three things that can be done to make this laptop uh, kind of, you know, better and bring it to back to life, revive it a bit. The first is to replace that hard drive. Of course, we've got a mechanical hard drive and laptop mechanical hard drives are notoriously slow. So the first step was to change that to an SSD. The second step was to upgrade the RAM, and then the third step was to put on some different software. So let's start with step one. So changing the hard drive is relatively simple. First of all, if there's any data that you have on the hard drive that you need, you need to back it up somehow onto a USB flash drive, over your network, whatever, because once you take out this hard drive, that's it, you're not gonna have access to it. Certainly on the laptop, maybe you could connect to it some other how, but really you could just consider you no longer have access to that data. Having done the backup, you simply take off the cover. Most laptops allow you easy access to the hard drive and to the RAM just by taking off some kind of plastic cover with one or two screws. Take off the cover, you'll see the hard drive in there, you can just slot it out. If it has a cradle, you put the SSD in the cradle. If it doesn't even have a cradle, you just put the SSD in its place, uh, screw the cover back on and that's it. You've now got that brand new SSD in there. Now I went for a one terabyte drive. The reason I went with one so big, of course, it could have gone with a 480 or even a you know 256 one, is because I wanted to install two operating systems on it and have it dual boot. One of the advantage of an older laptop like this is relatively simple to do dual boot between Windows uh, and Linux. You could go with a smaller one. I spent around $45 on that drive. That's about 40 euros. Now the second step is to upgrade the RAM. Again, taking off that same plastic cover, you'll find the RAM. This one had DDR3 RAM. Very quick, just to look up online for DDR3 RAM for a laptop, not for a uh, desktop, they are different sizes, but for the laptop, check the frequency. This was a 1066 one, and then I was just able to order uh, eight gigs online to fill up both slots. Now I could have just ordered a second four gigabyte, there was four gigabytes in there already, but I thought to myself, well, I best get two of the same uh, just to make sure every the dual, um, dual channel memory works perfectly. It would have probably been okay with just one, but I thought that they're relatively cheap nowadays, I won't take the risk, I'll just stick in two new uh, uh, slots of RAM there. So again, you can just pop them out using the clips, took the two new ones, put them in four gig each, give me eight gigs in total, screw the plastic cover back on, and now I've doubled the RAM, and having also upgraded the SSD, things are starting to look good. Now those RAM modules cost me around $35, that's 30 euros for eight gigabytes of RAM. Now there's not really much else I can do about the process of the inside of it. Obviously the screen, keyboard, these all come integrated, not a lot I can do. However, I do have a choice of what software I run. Now this was running Windows 7, but I did opt to put Windows 10 on it uh, because at least that would give me some updates for a little bit longer and it's still a very popular operating system. So you need to download Windows 10. Microsoft have a media creation tool. You need to put that onto USB, you need to boot off that and then just follow the instructions to install that. One thing to note, when you get to the bit about the hard drive, 
I actually went through the custom install and made sure I only set it to install on just half of the free space rather than on the full free space. And you do that just by hitting the new partition button and then specifying the size to be around half of what's in there. Then Windows 10 installed fine. Now Windows 10 is up and running. I've got Wi-Fi working okay. I'm using the Microsoft default display driver. I don't think it has much acceleration because watching YouTube at 1080p does make the CPU max out at 100%. Also the trackpad isn't doing everything it should do. I can't get gestures to work so I'm actually having to go up and scroll bars down with, you know, with the mouse rather than using two fingers or whatever else the gestures are. But besides that it's up and running and working fine. Great for productivity, great for web browsing. You can still watch 720p video on it without too much of a problem. Netflix and so on all looking good. But as I said, what I really want to do is be able to boot Windows or Linux on this. So I went and uh, looked for Linux. Uh, so many distributions to choose from. Obviously, at the moment, we're avoiding things like CentOS, Fedora. Really, you shouldn't get involved in those because of the way Red Hat is treating the open source community at the moment. So I went with Linux Mint. I went with the lightweight uh, version. Again, download that onto a USB drive. Full instructions are available on the Linux Mint website booted that up and it said, hey, oh, you've already got Windows 10 here. Why don't I just use that free space that you've left and then you can have a Windows 10 and uh, Linux together side by side. And that's what I did and it worked absolutely great. Once it booted up, I was actually able to see that the uh, video driver is much better under Linux for this older hardware. I was able to watch 1080p, exactly the same video, only about 50% of the CPU being used. So that was a win-win situation. Again, Wi-Fi is working and the trackpad was working under Linux. So I was able to use two fingers for scrolling and all that kind of stuff. So actually it looks like Linux is a better proposition on this older laptop, but I do have the option to boot into Windows if I need to. So in summary, what have I done? I've put in a new SSD. I've doubled the amount of RAM and I've changed the operating system and, and I've got Windows on there, but specifically I've got a lightweight version of Linux Mint, which actually is working really, really well. And so it's brought this laptop a whole new lease of life. It can certainly be used for the next three, four years uh, uh, in future without really any many problems for light productivity, videos and streaming, uh, web browsing and things like that. So the moral of this story is you don't have to throw away old laptops, even if they are over 10 years old. There's still a way to make them useful. Now, I'd love to hear your stories of how you've revived old laptops. Do tell me in the comments below. OK, that's it. My name is Gary Sims. This is Gary Explains. I really hope you found this video useful. If you did, please do give it a thumbs up. If you like these kind of videos, why not stick around by subscribing to the channel? You can also follow me on social media. All of the trendy handles are here on the screen. OK, that's it. I'll see you in the next one.